is Hard Parking, brought to you by Wright Honda and Wright Toyota out of Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm your host, Jay Finning, coming to you from Gilbert, Arizona. Aaron Forrester stopped by the studio the other day. If the name sounds familiar, he was on the show, God, it feels like maybe two years ago. So we talk about the Tempe Beach Concourse, which is coming up in March. More details on that in just a few minutes. Jay Finning here, and I want to tell you guys about Four Wheel Online. For over a decade, Four Wheel Online has been bringing the best truck accessories and truck parts to enhance the appearance and performance of all trucks and SUVs. They are dedicated to providing an extensive range of upgrades that will match any maker model on the road. Their truck products cover everything you need to give your truck a custom look and added functionality. And if you need a tire and wheel package, head over and use the configuration tool. They carry all the major brands of wheels and tires, so we'll get outfitted today. So visit them online at 4 Online or call them at 813-769-2451. Again, that's 4 Wheel Online, the number 4 Wheel Online. So I, I, I had to go into the retinol place. I had this weird thing in my eye that I had to get. I had to go to this place last year, take some advanced imaging, and then he had to sign off for the eye surgeon to go ahead and do my, my LASIK. So a few weeks ago, I went in for uh, like my annual follow-up. But this is thing, you, you go there and you wait and you wait and you wait, and they have this front waiting room. And I remember this from last time. But I kind of forgot. It's like a year ago. We have this front waiting room. But this time I went in and there's only a handful of people. And I'm like, huh, this is good. I can actually get in and out of here in a reasonable time because I think last time I was in here for a few hours. So I check my name in, sit down. Five minutes later, they call me to the back. I go to the back. And then I am reminded what they do is they call you back there. They put you in the exam room. They ask you five questions, six questions, whatever. And then they take you and they put you in another room. This other room is another waiting room. So it's like the second waiting room. The second waiting room is filled with like 20 people. And there's only 24 seats. This is when I am reminded that this room is longer than the front room. You come into the front room and you get tricked. And they're thinking there's not a lot of people. So I'm sitting in this room for an hour, hour and a half. They call my name. I go to another exam room. They take pictures of my eyes, send me back to the waiting room. Another 15, 20 minutes later, I finally get to go see the eye surgeon. Apparently, he's the only one working that day. I'm sitting in that room for maybe five total minutes talking to him as he takes photos, more photos of my eye. All right, we'll see you in a year. I think a year is pretty good. Uh, Okay, doc. So as I'm walking out, I stop by the checkout, and then there's a long line of people is it a line if you're sitting down there's a long row of people sitting in the hallway at the checkout counter and the reason is because the front room the secondary room is so full now they're parking people along this hallway so i stand there and i wait for the two people in front of me to finish with the checkout i get up there give them my name the girl looks at me looks at the paper she goes oh you're good you can go you're fine i'm like oh I'm fine. Two weeks later, I get like a $200 bill in the mail because obviously I'm not fine. And my thought is, I guess they don't always know at the time what your insurance is and isn't going to pay. But it's kind of shitty because you walk away thinking, wow, I didn't have to pay deductible. And then sure as shit, now I owe them $200. This also happened to me when I went to the, the foot referral like six months ago. But there I had a copay. It was like $100, $120. But then I still got a bill for another like 150 bucks three weeks later. Anyway, I didn't appreciate that. I figured more than, I'm not the only one that comes across some bullshit like that. And it was freaking annoying. This weekend was the Fountain Hills show. I think I talked about it last week. Phoenix Children's Hospital. You get a bunch of cars. You park around the fountain in Fountain Hills. Funny. The thing blows every, I think, every hour or so. But it's this huge charity event. There's tons of vendors. There's tons of cars. They have beautiful multi-million dollar cars parked out there for the general public to come see. And then they have military helicopters that come in and land. A guy parachutes in. It's pretty cool. But there's like no respect in some of these shows for Asian cars. That's what they call us, Asian cars. So your Hondas, Acuras, Nissans, Infinities, Toyotas, Datsuns, Mazdas. 
anything that comes from, you know, Asia. Although one could argue I have an American car because the NSX was designed and, and built in Ohio, the second gen. It's an American car, kind of. But one thing that I noticed is, and this, this isn't for all shows, but this specific show, we have different, there's four entrances. And depending on the type of car you have, depends on what entrance you go in. So I had the Asian car. So I came in entrance three. So what happens is you come in and there's usually people at the entrance, then someone in front of the entrance, like 10, 15 feet, because this takes place around, it's like a big park area. It's not a natural place for cars. It's a really cool walking path that goes around the body of water with the fountain that's in the middle. And usually there's ushers that take you, okay, you park over here, you park over there. So I get to the area. There's no signs yet, yet. And this is the Asian area. And one thing I noticed about the Asian area, it was just, this was super small. There are areas that say Corvette. There are areas that say Ferrari. There are areas that say Mercedes. There are areas that say classic car this, classic car that, high-end, Porsche, Audi. Then you have the Asian cars with no signs. Finally, someone shows up, shows up. He uh, finally got one of the main organizers, just a super nice guy, shows up, takes the Asian flag, nails it into the ground. Now we have this sign. But we're all squished in this probably 40 yards by 25, 30 yard area, which sounds big, but it's really not. You have all the water on one side, you have the walkway on the other. But I couldn't help but to think, since we had all the little Asian cars mixed together in this small little part of this giant event, it takes you about 45 minutes to walk around on the walking path, at least 45 minutes. And if you're stopping and looking at anything, it could be well over an hour just to walk around this path. It takes you 46 seconds to walk from the first part to the end of the Asian section. That's it. And it reminded me, it's like the grocery store. You go to the grocery store, unless it's a specialty Asian store, you go to the normal grocery store, you go to Walmart, and you want to buy soy sauce, maybe noodles, maybe chili pepper powder sauce stuff. The Asian aisle and the international aisle are all squished in to like an eighth of an aisle. And the entire rest of the store is everything else. That's what this felt like. It was terrible. There was probably 20 Mazda Miatas that showed up representing, all nice, all cool. But you pack those 20 in there, and then there was probably 15 to 20 other miscellaneous cars. There's only two Acuras, mine and my buddies. We had two Type S NSXs. No other Acura, no other Honda. I don't know what the hell's going on, but we need more respect. We need to have more space for our cars. Because when the guy showed up, he put the, little, the flag in the ground, the sedation car. He said, hey, you can actually park here. There, you can park up on the hill. You can park all the way over here. You can park all the way over there. And so he actually pointed to a very giant area. But our area was still roped off and marked off. So if you didn't have that conversation with him, because he only had it with me, then we're all squishing, parked in there like sardines. The strategy is you want to park to where you can have a fast exit. And that's exactly what I did. Parked right by the little walkway where once three o'clock hit, I can get in my car and kind of skedaddle out of there and get home. Awesome event. It's always an awesome event. They think they raised several hundred thousand dollars in charities for this thing, for Phoenix Children's Hospital. And I'm going to do it. I do it every year when I can. I'm going to do it next year. But maybe I can network and talk to enough people and talk to my other NSX owners, and then maybe we can represent and get kind of a larger chunk because I kind of feel like at this point, Honda and Acura should have like its own dedicated section, just like Mercedes, just like Audi, just like everybody else. But if we're only two cars register, maybe that's the problem. Coming up, Aaron Forrester. This conversation is brought to you by Cell Shop Wireless Services, your local destination for cell phones. I don't know, we get the official read later, but... Um, Aaron Forrester is in studio right in front of me. Welcome back to the show. First yeah. time in the studio. Just got done drinking some uh, some fine Hibiki Masters Select. Yeah, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. And also, thanks for the pour. This was great. 
We're going to have to get you another pour of something before you get out. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. For I anybody, still have mine. Anybody who's ever seen uh, Jay's collection of whiskey um, is something to be jealous of, especially if you like Japanese whiskeys. I do have a lot of those. I kind of, people are like, well, what do you like to drink? I go, anything that has alcohol in it. Because <laughs> what? We got vodka down there. Tequila. Gin, tequila. Gin. Scotch. And bourbon. Yeah. And then a bunch of weird shit. Yeah, all like the liqueurs and all that kind of stuff. Something that's kind of interesting that I just totally forgot about is um, is that Korean scotch is becoming a thing uh, because, like, yeah, everyone knows about like Japanese whiskeys and all the how the they brought over folks from England and mm. from Scotland to make whiskey. And they love it there, but yeah, uh, Korean and Taiwanese whiskeys. Taiwanese with the Cavalon. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. I was I had no idea that they were into whiskeys as well, so I was kind of like, oh, this is really cool. Got to try a few of them. They were very reminiscent of Japanese whiskeys, no surprise, that more like lighter, floral. Right. Not really super oaky, but still really, really tasty. I have some stuff downstairs I want you to try. It's called uh, Shim- Shimuda, Shimauda. And my friend Alex brought it to me when he came to the studio. He was in town visiting from uh, Washington State, and it's very... It's the, it's super earthy. I really can't. I, I want you to taste it before I okay. describe to you what it tastes like, and then you know we'll do that on your way out. But. I, I like to think I have a pretty good palate for that kind of stuff to try to pick up the nuances. But you know, I'll have to see if it's if yeah. It you're tastes. definitely an educated man. <laughs> yeah. So there's a app for beer drinkers, and so I'm gonna actually untapped. Kinda, untapped. Yes. There's and, one for wine, I think, or or is there? maybe there's one for bourbon. There's they they I have another one. I think it's from point. the same people who have untapped. So last I checked for my untapped, oh gosh. So my best friend and I, we, like when we ran our beer blog together for a long time, uh, we would keep track. We do we go to Portland. We hit oh, 22 breweries in four days in Portland. My God. And we didn't drink full, uh, full beers. We'd share flights. Sure. So like you're getting them at the equivalent of maybe a pint or two per stop. And then we just go to another one and another one. Uh, so we, and same with San Diego. So I have, he, he's got me beat down, like hands down. But I have tried over 3,295 different beers. That's a lot more than me. <laughs> I worked with a guy who probably has you beat. I'm going to research that and then drop it into the show probably after this if I can find out. But then I'd be forced to maybe have a conversation with him. And really- yeah, see, like my buddy Scott, he's had over 10,000. I was like, wow. But then again, he lives in San Diego, so he's, sure. he's there. But anyways, alcohol aside, yeah, thanks again for, <laughs> for the Of course, the we could talk alcohol. I mean, we were already talking about it for 45 minutes right. before this thing got started. But you have a show coming up with yes. Chris of Modern Culture. Correct. And you were Aaron Forrester, Aaron's Essential Garage. Mm-hmm. You guys have seen him. He's, again, he's been on the show before. It's been, I feel like it's been a couple of years. Uh, it's been. Was it 20? Almost two years. It was a phone call uh, where we were talking uh, about, about cars and cosplay, basically. It was like yeah. oh, the cosplay, the nerdy side of what I do, the hobby, and how that kind of transitioned uh, and how it applies to. To my Mazda, like all those details in the costume and how they translate into the automotive world. So that was the last time we talked. I went, yeah, about two years. Because you weren't done with your RX-7. No. And then now you have the TVR, which we're going to get into. Yeah. But Tempe Beach Concourse, yeah. first year, March 18th. Tell us about it. Tell us what's different about it. What can people expect with yeah. this event? So this idea actually came about... Um, I want to say about a year and a half ago, and I've been mentioning this to a lot of other folks about trying to set up like a car show event, something a little bit different, uh, not just like a traditional park and chill. Also, n- nothing that's going to have like two-step or drag racing, which there's a lot of that here. Um, sadly, Wild Horse Pass, which where we have all that stuff, is going away in a few months. Right. Um, but then on the total opposite end of the spectrum, you have like the Concourse in the Hills, which is um, – that's a massive event, tons of Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Bugattis, but then you have like some other stuff in between and Barrett Jackson. So you have this Scottsdale appeal, then you have this tuner appeal. And I was like, well, let's do something. I want to do something in, in between, a little bit of both, but also going back to that Comic Con reference. If you go to a Comic Con, if you've never been, you, yes, there's people walking around in costumes, there's some really interesting people watching. But if you go into what's called the vendor hall, the main exhibition hall, you have. Exactly that. You have vendors, you have artists, you have retailers of all sorts that are bringing stuff that's similar to or of interest to people of pop culture. So the thought in my mind was, okay, I wanted to work with like a local organization like Modern Culture to host this event where we can kind of combine 
car shows in that traditional sense, but also bringing that element of vendors. Um, if you've ever been to Barrett Jackson, you'll also see some vendors as well. But it's a very, very different vibe because you've got guys selling helicopters and like $200,000 boats and all these really expensive, really cool things. Or like these restaurants. Bunch of weird. Yeah. Like, who needs this? Who Obviously needs this? somebody because they keep coming back. Oh, yeah. Like some really cool stuff. Like there was oh, this yeah. 427 Cobra coffee table. Oh, like, that place is awesome. It's so cool. Like, like, how much is this? Oh, I'm going to see if I can make one. <laughs> yeah. Look it up on Etsy or look it up on uh, or Pinterest. I guarantee you. Yeah. Black steel furniture mixed with car parts. Exactly. So. It's just one, or just go to a junkyard and then just sandblast it and then clear coat it so it doesn't rust. And, but anyways, um, it's just, it's a very, very different vibe. So I wanted to also incorporate the, a charity element to it. Uh, this kind of goes back to the cosplay stuff again. When I first started doing costuming, I was doing my, my Iron Man armor. I actually founded a nonprofit charity costuming group. Uh, it was Arizona Avengers and they're still around today and they still do uh, charitable work, going to Phoenix Children's Hospital in costume. Uh, you've, if you've seen them out and about, it may or may not have been at the, um, it used to be the Tostitos, uh, gosh, what was it? Not the Tortilla Bowl. What is the football guy? Fiesta Bowl. Fiesta Bowl. Thank you. I, I know the Tortilla Chips, but yeah. yeah. Uh, it's changed a few names, but there's always sure. the Fiesta Bowl Parade. And right. so we would march in that along with like the 501st, the Star Wars guys. So we've always had this element of taking your talents, uh, taking what you love, and let's throw a charity element to this. So this is how the Tempe beach concourse came to be. Uh, so car show, charity, trade show, bringing people together in community. And I've been fortunate enough that when I reached out to the city of Tempe, cause I was looking for a location. That's the hardest thing. Oh yeah. Like in Arizona, there's land is at a premium, especially right now. And because of what's happening, you've had other people on your show talk about, like the the police departments, and then there's the takeovers on these intersections, and so people in the automotive community are as soon getting as you say we oh. want to do a car event. They're like, nope, nope, nope. Um, a lot of these events were like, hey, I want to yeah host 300 cars. Uh, I don't want to do that. Like I even went to, to downtown Gilbert and talked to the the folks in like the event organizers and said, hey, you have two parking structures, you have all this great place we can shut down the like this other parking garage and they said yeah no we, yeah. we don't want that um especially since they, they have a pre-existing uh, con, uh, agreements with like farmers markets and th this really didn't gilbert wasn't into it but the city of tempe they have the tempe beach park right and so we've had what, hawaiian festivals there concert festivals there beer garden beer, you, you yep. name it and so for me i'm like what a cool place to have a car event where you have this historic uh, bridge that goes, that's basically a mill. And then you have the Tempe town Lake. You have all these glass and steel buildings. This is a beautiful location. And I approached the city of Tempe and at first they're like, Oh, well, that's, that's a great idea. We're booked out for two years. And it's like, okay, well <laughs> I'll talk to you in a year. Right. A month later, uh, they gave me a call back and said, Hey, we had a cancellation. Um, it's gonna be March 18th. Can you do that? I was, so I was like, I will make it work. Right. Ironically, it's uh, the week after the Polynesian Festival. Uh, but yeah, that, that's the genesis of kind of how the Tempe Beach show got started. Uh, but to kind of summarize, I, got, I know it's kind of a lot of <laughs> data dump. It's okay. I'm good at editing. Uh, but I reached out to... Chris at Modern Culture and said, hey, this is an opportunity. Let's get this going. And uh, he agreed. Uh, this is something, an opportunity to host a really, really cool event, neat location. And if we can make it free, which we have been able to for attendance, uh, we're, we're, we're going to get it going. And you have Phoenix Children's yeah. on board, which yeah. is going to help bring you know people to the yard. Yeah. Uh, we actually spoke with their, their crew today. They have a whole team that's specifically for charitable givings and for events. And they're really, really excited. Um, now, what a lot of folks don't know is that the on the charity side, if you there's so many different organizations within the charitable foundation. So if you give, let's say, ten dollars to PCH, uh, there's a there's a general fund, but then there's very like specialty departments, uh, like like Crohn's colitis or like the cancer, and there's a lot of different departments. So we're partnering with the 
oh, I, I, I'm going to butcher like It's one of those medical technical terms, but it's basically like gastro gastro old into something gastroenterology yeah basically that um but it's specifically for the them so yes it is going to pch but it's going to that that uh specialty yep of the hospital um but they're very very excited it's the stomach people yeah like stomach stomach and all the lower <laughs> stuff that yeah. nobody really likes to deal with so they're they're on board and it's kind of funny because one of the organizers also is on the organization for the Concourse in the Hills, which is also a fundraiser. So about a month apart, you have two car shows, Concourse uh, ones that are both benefiting PCH. Yeah. And so we were we were kind of joking and uh, say, hey, uh, yeah, we're going to be there. I'll be there in Fountain Hills. And like, you, you mind if we pass out flyers? Like, oh, yeah, go for it. That's cool. But because, because we're on the same team. And that's the thing that uh, people, I, I hope the, when they look at these events, like, Hey, this is not a, who's going to raise more money. It's like, Hey, we are giving the public an opportunity to do as much good as possible. End of the day, the charity wins and benefits. Yes, exactly. And that's where like, for me, when people think about like what kind of a person they want to be, and if you, if you were to die tomorrow, what are people going to say about you? Um, this is this is kind of a selfish thing for me. Um, I would love for people to to say that I try to use my talents to help other people. Um, so in this way, like bringing people together to try to to do good, and it goes, goes back to the charity organization with the cosplay, setting up this this event, uh, or even just helping a friend like move their furniture in their house. I I've been blessed with so many things and opportunities. And it would be a shame if I didn't use that to try to help other people. Legacy is important. And that kind of takes me to, you know, I was going to say, you know, why? And, and now we, we kind of have the why. But this is, well, this isn't just, you're not just trying to build some random cars and coffee. Right. This is a huge event. Yeah, uh, it's very ambitious. It is. <laughs> it's very amb- ambitious. Um, I've actually, I, I was like program director, project manager, whatever you want. There's just different titles to where I've helped. With Comic Cons, uh, mm-hmm. so like Amazing Arizona Comic Con was here for years and years before they, there was they left because there was just, the market was too saturated, but they still are in Vegas. You believe that? Actually, for, yeah, to some degree, uh, at the height of with pop culture stuff, and then Phoenix Comic Con, they were kind of muscling people out a little bit. Comic Fest. Then you oh, said they had fan, to rename fan, it Fan Fest. They named it twice. That's right. Because San Diego Comic Con got all pissy and basically, if you, you technically is San Diego related to the New York one? No. So how are they fighting that out? Sandy. Yeah. So for those who don't know, the word Comic-Con is owned by San Diego Comic-Con. And this was a huge fight, legal battle between Salt Lake Comic-Con, now Fan-X. Um, don't get me wrong. Like the owners of Fan-X, they were down to San Diego Comic-Con and actually were trolling. And they were, they were doing some like some shady stuff. But it was still like, you know what? That's nothing illegal. Right. Uh, and so San Diego Comic Con, they actually tried to um, copyright Comic Con, and they were told they couldn't. So they added like the hyphen. Is it or, under like the generalization yeah, word like, usage clause or whatever? Right, like 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 tissue or something like that, where it's like you can't or Xerox. It's become public domain, um, and they originally lost that, and like so that's everyone was doing Comic Con. Right, but then they took it back to court against Salt Lake specifically, and so now San Diego can enforce that, like they won. Uh, so they can enforce it as they see fit. So, but anyway, it's totally whole uh, side. That's step. a rabbit hole we can go down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I've actually worked for Comic Cons, doing tons of like operational side of it, but nothing to this scale. Uh, granted, we had like tens of thousands of people at Comic Con, but they're all kind of self-contained in their own little world. They they, are, they get their ticket, they arrive, they do their own things. Right. Um, you don't have to really coordinate. Like I said, three hundred cars. You don't, yeah, you have to coordinate maybe a hundred vendors. Uh, so, and they're just bringing their little booths, and they're going to set up, and they're pretty much self sufficient. So, it's a very, very different world. Um, but for me, I've always had this in, in my mind: like, hey, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to go full steam. And this kind of goes back to you, you mentioned. Uh, you asked the question: is why? Yep. Why do all this? And. 
my mom, uh, for those who don't know, my mom, uh, she died of cancer. Uh, she had a brain tumor. It's a glioblastoma. It's the same cancer that John McCain had. Mm-hmm. And she passed away uh, on September 11th of 2011. And the way that a cancer works, uh, hers was in the communication center of her mind. And so she would start to have speech issues. Mm-hmm. Um Eventually to where she wouldn't no longer be able to communicate verbally. But before she was to that point where she couldn't communicate, is about six months prior, she was still very cognizant and was able to communicate freely. She initially had my, her doubts about me doing the, the charity costuming stuff. Um, when I first thought, when I said, hey, I want to do this. I want to try to get like hundreds of people together to do this. And we, I have, and there's multiple chapters. And my parents were like, yeah, this is some fa- some fad. You'll grow up. It's like, just like kids, like, oh, I'm play the guitar. And like, you play it once and you're done. But, right. Um, no, that, that's after you spend the money on the best guitar. Exactly. Yeah. So having, there was seven kids in my family growing up. Oh, that's right. And so like my brother went through like every uh, like instrument possible, including the accordion. My parents were like, okay, we're not going to push too much into these quote unquote fads. Uh, but I was doing this for a while and I kept going and this charity organization and she saw the drive I had to, to try to do this. And before she lost the ability to really communicate, she says, I want you to continue to use your talents. If you've been blessed with all these, I want you to continue to, to helping others and to doing good because uh, whatever your reason is for this earth, uh, this is a, a gift that you have. And I want you to continue to do that. And uh, as part of that, like, it was uh, in December, and I remember this because we're sitting in uh, her truck just outside the Hallmark store, and um, it was a little Iron Man ornament. Mm. And she, because that was the first costume I really kind of debuted was an Iron Man armor, and she says, just want to remember that you'll always be my Iron Man, and thank you for... Uh, oh, that's nice. For, so, yeah. It, that's, so that's been a driving force for years sure. uh, to continue to use talents to help other people. So that, that's a fantastic why. Any why would work. Right. But that one, you know definitely hits close to home. And, you know, I have this saying, and I think I've said it on here before, and I say it on social media, make a difference or don't. Right. You know, you can either sit around and not make an impact, or if you have the ability to make some sort of impact, especially someone with the gifts and the passion that you have. I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome why you're doing it. And I still need to register, (laughs) but I will. Right. And I want to be a part of it as much as I can and and help in any way that I can, as we've talked about, and I've talked Mm -hmm. about with Chris too. And it's actually you know, as I've, as I've told you, I'm part of, I'm planning something as well. And it's kind of along the same lines. It's, you know, it's charity focused. They kind of came to us and we don't want it just to be a park and chill. We want right. cars to be there. We want people to want to come back, you know, every year. And it's going to be local people in Goodyear. You have, if you're making honey and you want to sell your honey, mm-hmm. it's, it's a damn near farmer's market slash car event slash whatever. Yeah, it's so, Arizona. It's Arizona. You know, and it's just, that's what's going to keep bringing people back. And I think when the city of Tempe is going to look at it like that and they're going to love it. Yep. And it's just going to keep getting better and better. Right. And also with the city of Tempe, kind of going back to the whole police thing, because the city of Tempe was the one that busted the, one of the that car last, shows. That last event. Yeah. Oh, that last big event. Really big one. It wasn't even a takeover. It was just a. Yeah. It was an, an unfortunate event. That, yes. And actually, know. I think you even have uh, one of your previous episodes, you talk about it. But yep. um, this isn't. It really did not paint the Tempe police in good light. It, the, the way they handled things and the way it went down. Granted, I'm not sure how much the media, like newscasters, tried to sensationalize what actually happened versus um, what the media wanted to pre- present. Right. I, don't, I don't know. Right, sure. Uh, but it did not help. Right. Uh, the whole thing, like, where people saying, oh, F the police, or all the effort like, the police are just trying to do. I mean, no, there's a lot of good people. So this is also an opportunity for the city of Tempe Police Department, Tempe PD, to put on a good face as well. Say, hey, we do support the show. We do support automotive culture and communities. Um, we the want right way. The right way. Yep. Just please do it the right way because we're there with you. So it's an opportunity. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That. Are you are you trying to say that all car people aren't into takeovers, Aaron? Are you breaking oh, news gosh. right now? I hate those. I see. I kid you not, on various social media feeds, I'll see, like, there was a new another one that happened not that long ago here in Arizona, like in Northeast Mesa, and uh, somebody was just recording it. Thankfully, nobody got hurt. But, yeah, they, they were shut down the entire thing, just doing donuts in the center of the intersection. I'm like, really, guys? Come on. You know what's funny about these takeovers? Not to derail too much. 
is they pop up everywhere. Yep. Nobody that I know of in the car community likes them at all. Right. But I'm wondering how many of these hidden, it's almost like the old school lynch mob or something where <laughs> you, you don't know which one of these six people is part of the lynch mob. Oh gosh. Wasn't that video game like was like last of us. Oh, you know, I never, <laughs> speaking of the last of us, have you, have you been watching that? No, oh, not, uh, no, I'm sorry. Not like, what is that? The uh, alien one? Like, who's like the hidden alien? It's a video game where little astronauts. I don't know, but now I'm intrigued. Among Us. Uh, is that Among Us? Oh, the little Mungas. The little, the, that's like a little toy thing. Well, you're like those astronaut dudes. One of them is like an actually like an alien inside. You have to kind of kick him off the spaceship. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, the kids do this. It's called Among Us. Yeah. Among. Um, they're called Among Us. Okay. But yeah. Among Us. Yeah. So maybe, oh, I'm sorry. I just totally just jumped in there with that's all right. random That's what this thought. podcast is for. But yeah. I, I, how many of these people, because you, you go to these car meets all over town. Like, yeah. How many of these kids? And, I say kids. How many? Well, they're people? usually kids. Yeah. But the older we get. Well, and that's the other thing too. Is think about it. Okay, a Coyote 5.0 Mustang, right? Those came out 15 years ago. Doesn't seem like it. It's at least I remember. Yeah. They're about 10, at least 10 years old. They're over 400 horsepower from the factory, and now you can pick them up for less than 15 grand used. That's a lot of power for a 16 year old kid to get. And obviously, then because we've all been there, I still do it every now and again. I'm like, hey, I'm in a tunnel. He he he. Of course, <laughs> of course. But I'm not like doing donuts. I'm not doing anything that's stupid that's going to get anybody hurt. Aside from maybe myself. And, right. Take it to the track. Yeah, exactly. But and then once again, this kind of goes back to the track being shut down. Yeah, like what track? Exactly. So now we're we're in, we're in, it's in that horrible, vicious cycle. Like okay. Well, we're at a track. Oh, the track's too loud. Okay, well, where are we going to go? Well, we're going to race to the streets. Oh, get them off the streets. Get them into a track. Okay, let's build a track. Oh, it's too loud. It's right. a vicious cycle. But but the police. Yeah, going back Tempe to Tempe Police. Tempe Police is an opportunity for, the, like I said, to kind of reconnect with the community and say, hey, this is the right way of doing things. So what can people expect with this show that's, yep. that's similar and or maybe different other than what we've kind of talked about? Sure. So for starters, uh, the location, uh, th it is very central. Uh, so we don't have to worry about driving up to it's an awesome location. Oh yeah. It is like the heart of the Valley. Like right. You have Scottsdale, Tempe, everything flows into Tempe. If you've never been in the Valley, uh, the airport is within a like, hop, skip and a jump. Even, um, all the Scottsdale, like Barrett Jackson's like what, five to eight miles North of there. Mm -hmm. So it is a great location. So that helps a lot. Uh, time of year. So March 18th, uh, it's going to be Saturday. It'll be a morning show. So uh, from, gosh, 10 a.m. to 4. Uh, it is a trophy show. Um, but what makes this more a little bit more unique than other shows is when, when folks arrive, it is a family-friendly event, so it's not ticketed. Um, and you're going to see, kind of like you were talking about, like, hey, like these local honey vendors, you're going to see these Arizona vendors that yeah, it's not going to be, all just car related. Right. Um, we're going to have a lot of car related, but you're going to have this, hey, the, the guys who sell Hot Wheels, sure, that's car related or selling like these little drift RC cars. Yeah, that's car related. Uh, but didn't, just local businesses uh, that are going to be there. Who, they're just automotive enthusiasts and they just want to be there too. Yep. Uh, so you're going to see a mixture of vendors, uh, not just automotive ones. Uh, also, we're going to have the typical yeah, there's going to be judging. There's trophies. We're also going to have a like, live DJ, uh, but music specifically catered towards like the masses. Uh, so it's not going to be just... Friendly top 40. Exactly. Yeah. All, all the kind of stuff that you'd, you'd see at like a wedding. Right. <laughs> it's like, oh, hey, like the top 40 where everyone just dances to. And Please not not the Cupid Shuffle. Oh, not the Cupid Shuffle. I oh, will no. pack up and fucking leave. <laughs> oh, the Macarena, the Cupid Shuffle. Or it's it's weird. It's like the Pied Piper. It's almost like some sort of a transient thing where as soon as that song comes on, everyone stops what they're doing, like they're possessed, it's and they start <laughs> dancing to it. Yeah. It's fucking weird. Or like the, gosh, yeah, Cupid Shuffle, and then there was There's the, the other one. Oh, gosh. The, um, I don't clap, know. Clap, clap, yeah. Clap. Yep. The, Mom, to the left, to the right. Yeah. I, oh gosh, I can. I don't even want to say the name because it'll probably like bring a curse upon my head. <laughs> but uh, aside from that, there's a few other unique elements that we are bringing. Uh, for starters, we're doing a rap competition. Uh, not not mic on the mic rap like uh, Eminem. Cha cha. Yeah. Cha cha slide. Oh, see, yeah, you know, stupid shuffle and cha cha. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, no, it's I can't like, say it. if I say it one more time. Yeah, we're if you fucked. say it in the mirror three times, you're screwed. Yeah. Um, but we're gonna be doing a 
car wrapping competition sponsored by WePrintWraps.com. Um, they work with like Vinyl Vixen, like some of the other folks sure. in town. So yeah. they're, yeah. they're a really good company. So we're going to have three cars as a plan. And each one's going to be wrapped right in the middle of this event. So everyone can walk by and see how it's, A, how it's done. Uh, but also you're going to, so it'll be judged. The winning team gets a, an entire, uh, when I say role, it's probably going to be more than one, but enough material to wrap an entire car of their choice in whatever print they want. Nice. So if you want to do something crazy, kind of like your. The old, the old NSX. The old NSX. Kind of, if you want to do something crazy like that and you, you want to compete, that's an opportunity to have them print up something really, really cool. And that's your reward is you, you're getting this final role. Uh, so that's one thing that's happening. Also, we're working with a local uh, graffiti artist. Uh, he's also a photographer. And he's going to spray paint my brother-in-law's drift car on site. So his drift car, it's a old school, like 5.0 uh, powered E36 coupe. I mean, it is, it's a drift missile. I right. Know, but it's all white. Oh, yeah. I was parked next to it at an event. Yeah. 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 So that's Bryce. And uh, so it's, he's going to clean it up because it's, it's got a lot of drift gunk on it. Uh, but yeah, we're going to have uh, someone, a graffiti artist actually spray paint and really just paint an entire like drift library on the car at the event. Is he is he gonna do like is it like cell shaded or because that's like the thing now? I know no, it's gonna be more traditional like graffiti, okay. like what you're gonna find literally like on the streets. Okay, because um, I know everyone's doing it. even like was the Enki is has a prototype wheel that they had at SEMA that looks like the, the oh mon- do they yeah I yeah, it, see that. yeah. yeah it's like a prototype wheel that they're thinking about selling that looks like a two dimensional wheel, um, but no, this will be more traditional like rattle can style spray paint. So we've got to tape off obviously the glass and other areas, but it'll be a really neat experience. We actually have to park it really far away from everything else though, uh, because of the overspray. Right. And even if you're spraying, even if uh, there's overspray, it, this those particles. Yeah. It's dry, but it's might as well be dust and you, you don't really want that to land on anything. So we have to, right. we're strategically parking that uh, differently. So that's one, that's another element that we're doing. Um, on top of that, yeah, f- lots of food vendors. Uh, so we're going to have food trucks, food vendors of all different uh, sites. So you're also going to have like a food festival element if you really want to break that down. Uh, we're also doing raffles. Uh, so we're going to have various companies uh, donate products and goods. Sure. And 100% of the raffle proceeds go to PCH. Uh, just like the registration for the cars, uh, proceeds from that go towards PCH. Uh, we Once you've cleared costs. Right. And that's the thing. So – Vendors, there, there's, there's vendor fees, mm-hmm. um, but we're trying to keep them reasonable. Um, obviously, so vendor fees and registration fees, we have to clear our costs. It's not a free location. Um, and then there's certain like print services. So we're going to try to contribute as much as we can. And this is why we're focusing heavily on the, the raffle, or for raffle tickets, because that's 100% goes towards PCH. But also... PCH will be on site, so they can do direct donations. You can, uh, we're going to have a link, so you can make direct donations to PCH through us um, to them. Like we're basically, we're just the middleman. We're not, right. we don't handle any cash. We basically say, here's the website, go to them. Right. Um, because if you, even if you can't go, it's a great opportunity to, to donate to a good cause. So once we've, like, we're not trying to make this like, hey, we're we want to make millions of dollars, make tens of thousands. Of That's not the goal. Like, we want to be able to give back as much as we can. And at the same time, we still got to cover expenses. Right. Yep. Totally. So this is March 18th. Uh, people, if you want, you guys go online. Aaron's going to tell you where you can yep. make a donation um, from anywhere in the United States because it all goes to Phoenix Children's and it's all 5013C. Mm-hmm. So that means exactly. save it for your taxes. It's too late for this last year's, but you can save it this year for next year's. And we could all do more. So where do they need to go? So we're actually going to be able to have the link on modded cultures, Instagram. So modded culture. So M O D D E D and then culture with a K. Uh, we actually have a link tree link in there. That'll take you either to registration, mm-hmm. uh, or you can, there's a link separate link on there that you can actually go straight to PCH to make a donation that way. So that's going to be the easiest way. And then, uh, also when we're on site for advertising at like Highline or the actual event, PCH will be on site to actually take those donations. If you are so generous to do so. And how can people 
keep in contact with you, Aaron, because they're up, they're probably not going to go through the card catalog of episodes. No, no, they're not. Uh, so the easiest way to, so for those people who are interested in all the weird stuff I do, um, <laughs> the weird stuff. Oh yeah. So, uh, it's Aaron's eccentric garage. So you can find me either Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, just developing content for weird stuff. So when I say weird stuff, uh, this one look in my garage, literally it's an eccentric garage because I have a rotary powered sports car. I have this weird hand built British car that looks like an alien built it. Um, kind of, kind of, um, that was built by guys who literally would draw like penises on the other side of like the carpet. <laughs> They're sending it down. I just thought line. about this as you're saying that with aliens and what is it? Is it the covenant? So halo yeah. covenant has a, like the little, there are little things, a little like one man ships, they fly. This is like a covenant mm-hmm. purple car. Right. Well, that's the thing. So if, if anybody's interested, they'll see my social media or my videos. I did a whole series of importing a, a TVR Cerbera, not Cerbera or Car- or like they said, donut Carabera. I know it's Cerbera, like Cerberus, the three headed dog at guards, oh, Hades. But, um, the, the elevator pitch of a Cerbera. So it's a 19 late nineties, British sports car, hand built fiberglass tube chassis, custom engine by TVR. Really rare, really loud, really cool, really weird, and very British. When I say very British, anyone who's ever owned a British car knows like about their electrical. Things happen. It's and, uh it's a V8. Yeah. Too. Uh so TVR got the bright idea uh when Rover bought up BMW. Or I'm sorry, BMW bought Rover uh back in the the nineties. Because they want to keep it quintessentially British. It's got to be a British car. And they're like, hey, well, let's just make our own engine. It can't be that hard. <laughs> so they employed a little. went to Radio Shack and bought a few parts. Yeah. So they employed the, the same guy who designed the, the Viper V10. Um, and he also designed engines for F1 and for MotoGP to design uh, two, technically three engines, but realistically two, uh, a V8 called Speed 8 and then an inline 6. And then the they took two of the inline 6s and turned them into a V12 called the Speed 12, and they made three of those cars. But and If that sounds familiar to you old schoolers, that's uh, from Gran Turismo. Right. The, basically, the car that was like impossible to drive because it was so big and powerful. You, you and can fast. only drive it on that oval track. Yeah, and, the and high speed the top track. Speed, yeah. yeah, and like you're doing like faster than anything else because it, it was. Um, back in the day when they were testing it, uh, as the legend goes, it was actually faster than the McLaren F1 around the track. But the problem was you had to have, it was not a car that you could drive on the street. It yeah. was too dangerous. Right. But yeah, so the TVRs, uh, modern day TVRs are starting to become legal. And really, so I know you've been to a Monterey, like to Pebble Beach. And there's a, there's only about a dozen or so of us, not even a dozen, because one guy owns five. Um, I haven't been to actual Pebble, but I've okay. done the Monterey but Car, Monterey week, car week. Yeah. So. Most of the the Cerberus imported are in California, on basically between three three guys, and there, I think there's like eight eight of the twelve are <laughs> only between three guys, all between L.A. and San Diego. But uh, we were talking about doing a a road trip, actually uh, like a caravan. So uh, getting, there's going to be three Cerberus here in the valley in the next month. That'll be cool. Yeah, so you have mine, um, one that was just on bring a trailer. Oh, actually, so it basically came from L.A. It's going to be here. It's already here. And then uh, one that's been down in Tucson. So what we were thinking about is all of us driving As up. all residents? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you're obviously a resident. I'm here. Tucson so, sounds like a resident. Yeah. And then the other one is a resident. He lives up in Fountain Hills. Okay. He yeah. actually owns a 1979 uh, TVR 3000S. It's like one of four that was ever imported to the United States left-hand drive. Um, really, really neat little car. Uh, but and he's he is young. He's like in his 20s. Uh, and he's already got really rare cars but we're thinking about driving up to monterey um because the former ceo um so peter wheeler who was, who was responsible for all these crazy tvrs he he passed away many many years ago but his son was on like on the grand tour and talking about how when he was working uh, like in the paint booth where they're using i found out they use cyanide based paint sweet so my car is it has, <laughs> seriously it was like killer looks well that's because it had so much metallic the cyanide paint really made it pop I didn't realize this, but they said when they're in the paint booth, they just come up behind you like a bunch of dudes just kind of sp- spray your back. And he's like, yeah, it kind of tingled and burned a little bit, but <laughs> Jesus. Um, and they had one guy who went in without a respirator and he got, 
basically, yeah, asphyxiated from pain and cyanide. But um, anyways, his son, um, there's, there's, we're talking, I mean, I, he may be coming out to Monterey. So uh, that legacy of having someone kind of like Paul Walker's brother, kind of like Cody. Right. Um, having somebody connect, someone super close, to super this, close, yeah. who who worked in the factory, built the cars, but also literally was family members to the CEO who helped design, well, help basically not really design, but help basically build these cars and bring them to the world and make them what TVR is like. When you think of, okay, no one really thinks of the TVRs of the '60s. They think that's like like when they're racing the Cobras and all that kind of stuff. Always thinks of that. Maybe the wedges of 1970s and 80s, because it was a wedge of cheese. People think of like swordfish. They think of the right, Tuscan the movie. Uh, they yep. they think of PlayStation games. They think pretty much '90s through 2008 when uh, Jeremy Clarkson reviewed the Sagaris, uh, which was the chassis was developed by Noble. That's what people think. Uh, they don't. Yeah, not, I could see that. Even though they've been building cars since 1946. Yeah, but unknown. And also, it doesn't hurt that their factory burned down twice. But yeah. But so we're really thinking about uh, how cool would this be? We're going to have the biggest collection of modern TVRs in one place and like never, ever happened in the United States with potentially meeting up with uh, the son of Peter Wheeler. Well, if there's ever a place to do it, that would be the place. Right. Monterey except for, Car Week. I, I just Googled how far, how far away is Monterey? It's like a 13 hour drive. Yeah, I was going to say it's like a 13, 14 hour drive. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't have cruise control. I don't have a dead pedal. The seat's not that great because but i have like my little medical cuff thing to inflate my lumbar support but it's not that good <laughs> yeah i can't do long drives anymore i mean i probably could now but with the old car I just just driving to tucson i'm like eh. well the drive let's be honest nobody wants to drive to tucson even people in tucson don't want to be in tucson <laughs> right that's true i mean there's a reason why family guy made fun of it but um no it, that's the thing. Like, even in your, like, in your NSX, though, I'd imagine that'd be like a great freeway cruiser. Well, oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! But well, like, I still don't want to drive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, want to go go some more booze? Yeah, I, I think another port is about another time for another round. All right, he is Aaron Forrester. Aaron's eccentric garage. Yep. Be looking for Tempe Beach Concourse if you are regional i'm not going to say just arizona because you can come out yep. regional and Actually, that, some folks come from texas even there you go and that is uh, march 18th yep march 18th uh go over to modded culture um uh, culture with spell with the k and you can check on either facebook instagram or um we actually have the websites should be going we're just a little behind but the website should be going up live this weekend all right sounds good thanks aaron thank you I want to thank Aaron for coming into the studio. I think the next time he comes over, he's probably going to bring some booze. We went down afterwards and had a couple drams of some of the other fine liquors that I have downstairs. Going back to the Fountain Hill show, there's one car manufacturer that I wanted to talk about. I've never heard of from, never heard of them before. They were in the EV section, so EV had their own section, and it was three times as big as the Asian car section. But they had a, a car out there. It's called a Draco. D-R-A-K-O, like dragon, but with a K, Draco. They had a Draco GTE, which kind of looked like a Fisca Karma, an old school Fisca Karma. It kind of looked like two or three super sporty EVs molded into one, but a lot more aggressive. Had these huge forge line wheels. So forge line and Draco have a deal to where the wheels have like the Draco emblem, the center cap everything but forge line actually makes them for them like a private label but the thing about this draco was I was asking this guy because they had two of them they have the draco gte and a Dra and a draco dragon the draco dragon kind of remind me of the tesla that has the little fold-up doors that are the gold wing doors the the egg the flying egg is what i call it and that's on pre-order the gte has I don't know, close to a, 1200 horsepower and they're only made to order so they've made 24 25 of them, I guess. But this thing is 1.2, 1.3 million dollars. That's the ballpark the guy told me. You guys should look it up. Draco. D-R-A-K-O G-T-E. Tell me what you think. I think it's a pretty cool looking car. If I had FU money, I would not buy one. 
because they're only making 20 something of them, which can be good and can be bad, right? So if you just have FU money, you don't care, but you have this really unique vehicle, kind of like my old favorite car, the Vector. There's only a couple dozen of those ever. I mean, there wasn't even there wasn't even 20 of those. I think it was like 17. But they kind of went down in value for the long longest time, but now they're unobtainium. I think this could be that for the EV world, maybe. Or they could sell to some OE, but it's a private label. Pretty cool car. But I'm rambling. I'm rambling again. But guess what? At least I have my voice back, and I don't sound like complete shit. So with that being said, one thing, right, hunting, right, Toyota, fourwheelonline.com, sell shop, wireless services, Patreon business, Sport of Cuyah Automotive, Auto Water Garden, Florida, Pell Construction, Auto Company, Michigan, Big House, Small Home Design, Ashport, Virginia, Trevor City, Michigan, Westgate Exotic Cars and Rentals, Glendale, Arizona. They are going to be super busy this week because the Super Bowl is this Sunday. Dang it. This should have been the Super Bowl edition episode. I did not call and get people's predictions, nor will I. Maybe I will. Maybe I will this week, and then I'll play on Monday, and we'll find out who was right and who was wrong. There's still time. But I would expect Westgate Exotic Cars and Rentals to have almost zero vehicles because the Super Bowl's coming in. And, of course, shaping success with West Tankersley out of Boise, Idaho. Catch myself in West Tankersley every Wednesday, 7 o'clock Pacific time for one drink Wednesday. I don't know if I'll do this Wednesday, though. Sorry, Wes. I got family in town, man. If you're in a position to help the podcast upgrade, join the Patreon as those $3 a month. Get access to bonus audio as well as swag. Mark Solomon, Kathy Cox, Eddie Ramos, Richard Graves, Byron Jones, Paul Jung, Alex Camina, and Drew Bunkley. Thank you for your support. If you're interested in picking up a hard parking podcast t-shirt and your name isn't any of the names that I just read off, you can email the show or send a message on any of the social media platforms or go to hardparkingpod.com, go to the shop and buy one. Follow me on Instagram at jfinning, jjbfinning, join the Hard Parking Violations Facebook group and follow me on YouTube. I can't grow that you tell the world how great this show is. Let's do this. Let's grow this thing together. I will talk to you all next week. Tell me who you think is going to win the Super Bowl. I will make sure I mention it during the next episode. Shut up! (laughs) Now it's stripping time. Ain't nobody got time for that.